Okay, so we are mostly just going to be going over the homework here. Uh, but before we do that, why doesn't everyone give this a try? You might have to look up a few things. Okay, so hopefully we all did that. If we got on Google and found the mass of the moon, it would be... Oh, I give it to you. Never mind, you don't have to look up anything. All right, easy enough. R is 2GM over C squared. I suppose you could have to look up the speed of light if you don't remember it. And we get, so, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. Oh, drop my 2, so I'll put it there, times 2, times the mass of the moon, 7.3 times 10 to the 22 kilograms, all over the speed of light squared, which is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second squared, so 9 times 10 to the 16, and I get 0, 0.0, I should say approximately, 0 0.12311 meters. This is approximately 0 0.11 millimeters. So how big would the event horizon be across? That's asking for the diameter. That's how big it is across. So approximately 0 0.2 millimeters. One-fifth of a millimeter is how small you would have to crush the mass in the moon to make it a black hole. Incredibly small, incredibly dense, way beyond the realm of anything we can fathom. Okay. Homework. We're going to go over gravity worksheet 7.1. So, give you all the formulas you could potentially need here. Calculate the strength of the gravitational field due to Earth at a point on the orbit of Mars. So Mars is an average of 225 million kilometers from the center of the Earth. So first things first, let us convert that. So R, 225 million kilometers. Well, let me move that out of the way. That is... 225 times 10 to the 6 kilometers, that's 2.25 times 10 to the 8 kilometers, and then a thousand kilometers, or thousand meters in a kilometer, so 2.25 times 10 to the 11 meters. Okay? Uh, gravitational field due to Earth, so we need to use the mass of the Earth here, which is 6 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. So the field, little g, we can put the arrow over it to remember that we're not talking about 9.8. The arrow, this is the symbol for a vector. I'm just using it here so that we clarify that this equation for the uh, field, which oh, I actually don't have up there, of being g m over r squared, right? That can be anything. It doesn't, we're no longer talking about the surface of the Earth. It's no longer a value of 9.8. We get 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times 6 times 10 to the 24 all over 2.25 times 10 to the 11 squared. This should be about 7.9 times 10 to the minus 9. Now, when we're talking about fields, we tend to say the units as being newtons per kilogram, but it is still just meters per second squared, right? This comes from the fact that really the equation for the field is the force over a mass, right? Because f over m is g m over r squared. If I was to multiply both sides by little m, I get the force of gravity. So force in newtons, mass in kilograms, but same thing. 
Number two, what is the gravitational force on Mars due to Earth? Well, this is why gravitational fields are great. We just found that at that point, G has a value of 7.9 times 10 to the minus 9 newtons per kilogram. How do I calculate the force of gravity on Mars? Well, same way we've always done it. F equals mg, except we have a different g now. 6.4 times 10 to the 23 kilograms times 7.9 times 10 to the minus 9 newtons per kilogram. And we get about 5.1 times 10 to the 15 newtons. So if you know the value of the gravitational field, that's the same as saying you know little g, right? We've always known the value of the gravitational Earth's gravitational field near the surface, 9.8. Now we're just saying we can calculate it anywhere. So the gravitational field from Earth at Mars is 7.9 times 10 to the minus 9, so just multiply by the mass of Mars. Okay, number three. What is the change in gravitational potential energy for a one kilogram mass moving from the surface of the Earth to a point three times the Earth's radius? So, we have the change in potential energy is g mass of the Earth. One kilogram is the other mass times we start at radius of the Earth, R1. We go to three times the radius of the Earth. Okay, radius mass of the Earth, six times 10 to the 24. Radius of the Earth, 6.4 times 10 to the six meters. Okay. So I get 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times mass of the earth, 6 times 10 to the 24 kilograms times 1 over 6.4 times 10 to the 6 minus 1 over 3 times 6.4 times 10 to the 6. Be careful plugging these things into your calculator. Definitely do each of these fractions by themselves, then do the subtraction, then multiply it all out. You should get approximately 4.2 times 10 to the 7 joules. A lot of energy. You gain a lot of energy by moving something up to 3 times the radius of the Earth. Okay, same thing. We're now moving that one kilogram mass from the surface of the Earth to Ultima Thule, which is 6.6 .6 billion kilometers away. So Ultima Thule is a, it's a large asteroid in the Kuiper Belt. If you've never heard of the Kuiper Belt, that is a, a belt, asteroid belt, way beyond uh, most of the planets. So in fact, Pluto, you've heard, is no longer a planet. I don't even know. Did you guys even learn it was a planet? I forget how long ago we demoted Pluto. But Pluto used to be considered a planet. It's not, though. It's actually just a large Kuiper Belt object, is what we call it. It's one of the largest things in the Kuiper Belt. But it's an asteroid, really. It's, it's or really, it's a, oh, what do they call it? I don't know. Protoplanet, not protoplanet. Dwarf planet, something like that. Whatever. It's a Kuiper Belt object. So, same deal. Let's calculate this. We just have to first figure out, so 6.6 .6 billion, billion is 10 to the 9 kilometers. That means this is 6.6 .6 times 10 to the 12 meters. So, delta PE is 6.67 .6 times 10 to the minus 11. Mass of the Earth, 6 times 10 to the 24. Mass of the object is 1, so 1 over 
6.4 times 10 to the 6 minus 1 over 6.6 .6 times 10 to the 12. And what do we get? We get approximately 6.25 times 10 to the 7 joules. This should be interesting. So our previous answer to 3 times Earth's radius, which actually let's just write out what that was. So when we were moving it to 3 times 6.4 times 10 to the 6, so that's going to be, I don't know, approximately 1.9 times 10 to the 7 meters. Right, about 19, 3 times 6.4, I'm calling that 19, so more like 19.5-ish, whatever. So I get about 1.2 times 10 to the 7. Let's make our lives easy. 2 times 10 to the 7. Okay, or 20 million meters. I am now moving it 6.6 .6 trillion meters. So this is 20 million this is 6.6 .6 trillion. It hardly takes any more energy at all, right? 6.25 times 10 to the 7 versus 4.2 times 10 to the 7. So it's only about 48% more energy. This makes sense, though, when we think about gravitational wells. This picture that we've been going back to is accurate. Most of your energy is getting out of this steep part. But going from there, way out, is pretty easy. It doesn't take that much energy, right? I am basically already away from the Earth. It's not that hard to keep going, right? I do need some more energy, but I don't need that much more. Right? So once I'm out of that initial steep part of the well, I'm cruising, and I can make it all the way to Ultima Thule. Okay, what is the escape velocity of the sun? We look up some things about the sun. And so what do we get? So the escape velocity is the square root 2g m, that symbol little bullseye symbol is what we use for the sun. So mass of the sun, radius of the sun. Mass of the sun equals, okay, I thought my thing had stopped. Mass of the sun is about two times 10 to the 30 kilograms. And the radius of the sun is about seven times 10 to the eight meters. Oh no, my internet seems to not be working great because things are taking forever to show up. I don't like that. Okay, so escape velocity is square root 2, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times 2 times 10 to the 30 over radius 7 times 10 to the 8. We get about... 61,700 meters per second. So that's about 140,000 miles per hour. You have to go really fast to get off the sun. Okay, assuming Superman is flying past the surface of the moon at a distance of 100 kilometers, how fast does he have to fly to not get caught in orbit around the moon? So look up information about the moon. We already did that. Mass of the moon, 7.4 times 10 to the 22 kilograms. Radius of the moon, 1.7 times 10 to the 6 meters. OK. Well, this is just asking, what is the escape velocity at a distance of 100 kilometers from the moon? So we just do that, right? Escape velocity means you are not caught in orbit. You can escape. So 
2 times 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. Mass of the moon, 7.4 times 10 to the 22. All over. Radius of the moon, 1.7 times 10 to the 6th, plus 100 kilometers. 100 kilometers is 100,000 meters, or 1 times 10 to the 5 meters. So really, this is just equal to 1.8 times 10 to the 6. And we should get something approximately 2, 3, 4, 1 meters per second, or about 5,000 miles per hour. I certainly think Superman is capable of flying at about 5,000 miles per hour, or so movies and comic books have led me to believe. Okay, I think that's really all I wanted to make sure we get covered here. Go over the homework, and you are off to doing a second gravity worksheet. Alright, oh, I guess I shouldn't just say documents worksheet gravity 2, it's a, you know, unit 7, worksheet 7.2. Okay, see you all later.